on this episode. I wanted to be the best, and then I fell short. Through kind of a public incident that was relatively embarrassing. I felt like I let down everyone. And I've done that for so long. Um, mostly my family. If it keeps going this path, I don't want to do something that I'll regret. I don't have a direction now. I need that coach. You are always one decision away from totally changing your life. Do you want to change? I'm Ed Milet. I'm an entrepreneur, best-selling author, and a life coach with one goal, to change people's lives. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Drop a seat. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great to be here. All right. Today, I'm meeting with 12-time Olympic medalist Ryan Lochte, who's one of the most decorated swimmers in the history of the Olympics. But after not qualifying for the 2020 team, Ryan says he's hit a really low point in his life. He's reached out to me for some help. Take a look. Hey, guys. I'm Ryan Lochte, a 12-time Olympic medalist, and swimming is coming down to an end for me. Um, I want to announce my retirement soon. Um, with that being said, I need direction. I need a path. Um, I have two beautiful kids. I have a beautiful wife. So I have a family of my own and I want to support them. I want to put food on the table and the only thing I knew how to do was swim. Um, and that made my income. So now it's a new journey. It's a new chapter that I need help Writing. All right, Ryan, thanks for being here, brother. Uh, thank you for having me. First things first, man, congratulations on such a truly remarkable career. It's something thanks. to be really, thanks. really proud of. I am. I am. Very. Uh, took a long time. <laughs> it took a long time, but it took a lot of work, and you're very yes. rare in the fact that you've achieved this. And But you wouldn't be here if we were talking about just you making the team and winning all those medals. You didn't yeah. make the last team, and it yeah. sort of affected you a little bit. So what, what's going on with you right now? Um, I mean, let's just start from the beginning. Um, both my parents were swim coaches, so I was always around the pool deck. Okay. Um, and I kind of just fell into the sport, and I just fell in love with the water. Mm. Um, it was like my happy place. So I was watching the 92 Olympic Games on TV, and this um, Pablo Morales, he won the 100-meter mm. butterfly for USA. And I just remember watching him win, congratulating the other swimmers, going around the pool deck, shaking hands with everyone, signing autographs, taking pictures, and I was just like, man, I want to be just like that guy. Mm -hmm. And that's where my dream started, mm -hmm. of going to the Olympics and getting a gold medal. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I dedicated my life to, my, to that sport. Yeah. Um, I always had a coach, I always had someone giving me direction, like mm -hmm. being like, Ryan, 2012 Olympics, you're gonna get a gold medal, like yeah. this is what you're going for. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, so I always had direction. Mm -hmm. And it happened. And um, in, two, in 2004, um, it was my first Olympics, I got a gold medal. And then 2008, I got more medals. Mm -hmm. And then 2012, I got more. Mm -hmm. And then 16. And then, and then it happened. <laughs> what happened in 16? I think everyone knows what mm -hmm. happened in 16. Give us your version. Um, you know, I made a mistake. <laughs> um, when I shouldn't have been going out partying, celebrating, I should have been um, staying in the Olympic Village uh, with my team. but. Me being me, I went out and partied. Mm -hmm. um, I got in some trouble and it changed my life. Yeah. Um, I lost a lot of sponsors, mm -hmm. lost everything, except, um, well, my girlfriend at the time, she's my wife now, um, she stayed with me. Yeah. And she is everything. I could see that on she, your face. Because it was just such, like, I got hit with everything and she stayed right behind me and supported me. And it was like, this is not who you are. This is like, you can't let other people win. Like, you gotta keep fighting, because mm -hmm. that's who you are. And that's what she, when she first met me, I had a goal, like going to the Olympics, getting a gold medal. So I was always driven. Mm -hmm. um, and then my life completely changed. Not when that incident happened, um, I learned from it. I wanted to become a better person. I didn't want to be what everyone thought as me as like a, just a jokester. Didn't really care about much. Mm -hmm. Just wanted a party. Yeah. Um, that's not me at all. And so that that situation changed me. 
and then 2017, a miracle happened. We had a son. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I always get teary-eyed when I talk about my kids. I love that. Um, and it was no longer about me. Mm. It was about them. Mm. What am I going to do now to protect my family? Mm. And that's what it is. Mm. And that's what my life's been now. Mm. I was put on this earth not to swim, get gold medals. Right. It was to be a husband, mm. to be a father. Mm. So I was swimming since 2017, basically, for my family, for everyone coming up, hey, do it for the old guys. Like, you're going half the, against half the people your age. Like, you got to do it for them. Like, we believe in you. Mm. So I was doing it for everyone. Mm. And I think I was, I was ready for it during 2020. Mm. And then the pandemic, everything got postponed. And I mean, I was still doing it. I was like, man, I got to do it for my family. I was getting more excited. Mm. And then I fell short at Olympic trials. And I felt like I let down everyone. Okay. Um, mostly my family. But. But did you? I feel like I did. Yeah. Does do does do your kids love you less because you uh, didn't make the Olympic team? They have no idea. Really? Oh, really? <laughs> They're it's like, just, oh, daddy, daddy. Yeah, if they see yeah. me in a swimming pool, they'll be like, oh, daddy's swimming, yay. Yeah. And this wife, that, <laughs> this wife that loves you through kind of a public incident that was relatively embarrassing in your life, does, uh, does she love you less because you didn't make the team? No. Okay. What she's worried now is I've always had a coach mm -hmm. to tell me, I was always driven, basically. Yeah, I, could I always see it. had a goal. Mm -hmm. Um, and now that like swimming's coming to an end, because I want to announce my retirement soon, mm -hmm. um, she's worried that I don't have a direction now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have things that I'm doing lined up in my life, mm -hmm. um, but it's like I need that coach to yeah. kind of put that foot in that doorstep mm -hmm. to get me going. Mm -hmm. um, like I apply for the position. Yes. And I'm here to help you. you. Yes. I got you. I got you. Uh, We're going to take a quick break. More with Ryan next. And now that swimming's gone, it's like, um, I mean, it's gotten to the point where I don't even want to get up out of bed sometimes. Um, and if it keeps going this path, I don't want to do something that I'll regret. I want to ask you a question. This recipe that you had for swimming, obviously, genetically, it doesn't hurt to be 6'2 and, you know, to have some of the gifts yeah. you have. It doesn't hurt, right? But it's more than that because there's a lot of guys that are 6'2 or 6'3 that are great athletes that don't make an Olympic team, that don't win any medals ever, that don't win golds, that don't win 12 medals, that don't win, that don't <laughs> beat Michael Phelps. I just want you to hear it back because it's not about swimming to me. It's a matter of you really remembering who you are. You made a mistake that I've made in my life that most people make. Mm -hmm. And that is that they tie their identity to something external. They tie it to what they do or what they look like or what they've achieved. And all human beings do this. And when we do it, it's a very dangerous road. Or we say, well, I'll be happy when I get this thing, when I have this relationship, when I look a certain way. And this is not a way to live our lives. You're not a swimmer. You're a winner who was yeah. swimming. And those same recipes when you were swimming that caused you to win can cause you to win outside of swimming. I watch you. When you talk about the winning, you sit up, you breathe differently. When you talk about your kids, when you talk about your mistakes, if you noticed, you sort of, you yeah. even change physically what you do. You're a very physical man. And one of the things we do in our life to change our emotions is we actually move. And so you actually do depression. You do anxiety. You do fear. You physically do it. Yeah. So one of the cues for you as we'll work through some things later is just watch our physiology. Watch how we breathe. Watch how we hold ourselves. So go back to the swimming part just for a second. 
Did you love it? I'm just curious. Did you love swimming or like swimming? I actually loved practice. Like, I love bleeding. Like, I love just being in pain, like physical pain. Mm. Because I was like, you know what? I just did something. Mm. And I'm coming to, like, take your lunch money. Like, I'm coming, <laughs> I'm coming after you, basically. Yeah, yeah. And I wouldn't have stopped until I hit that target. Well, who's still, I mean, how many guys are trying to make a team at 36 years old and go swimming Not against one. these kids? Not one. Not one. So there's these things, bro, <laughs> that you've done. That, and I'm not, this is, you have to look at me when I'm telling you this. This is something that you have to own about yourself. You're a really unique guy because you have a high degree of humility. See, I think the happiest and most successful people tread this line. It's really interesting. They have huge self-confidence combined with humility. Mm -hmm. It's really difficult. You get someone with tons of self-confidence and they start to lack humility, they can make a mistake. Yeah. They can burn out. They can start to think they've got it all together, that they can't, you know, they can't screw up. You see someone with a ton of humility, though, with no self-confidence, you have to carry them all the time. Yeah. So we've got this humility now mm -hmm. that you now have in droves that maybe you didn't have in 2016. Maybe you didn't yeah. have it some other time. We've got to get this confidence thing back again. Yes. And this confidence thing back starts with you doing what you've always done, which is you kept massive promises you made to yourself. You promised yourself to get up early and swim, you did it. You promised one lap, one more lap, you do one more lap. You're a dude yeah. who's always done one more than everybody yeah. else. Am I right about yes. that? Yes. Yeah. What else about swimming made you successful? Was the love of it, the hard work? Do you think it was also having the coach? What was the other element? Is there another element to it that you think was part of the recipe of your success in swimming? Just, I wanted to be the best. Mm -hmm. I want to be the best I could be. Mm -hmm. And nothing was gonna, no one was gonna, like I've had a lot of people saying like, oh, you, you can't beat Michael Phelps. Mm -hmm. You can't take a, his world record. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, watch me. Mm -hmm. Like, I've always had naysayers, and I knew what I was capable of just because of the work that I put in. Mm -hmm. I can outwork anyone else in this entire world mm -hmm. if I put my mind to it. Okay. And now that swim is gone, it's like, um, I mean, it's gotten to the point where I don't even want to get up out of bed sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and if it keeps going this path, I don't want to do something that I'll regret and sell my Olympic medals to just put food on the table. I mean, it hasn't gone that way, but if I don't snap out of it and get that coach and that motivation, that drive again, like, I'm gonna have to do that. Yeah, well, that's not freaking happening. I can promise you that. That is never going to happen, and we're gonna get this thing going. We'll be right back. There's never anything wrong with asking for help. People love a comeback story. Are you willing to do that? That will be very hard. I'm here with Ryan Lockie. I want to say something to you, by the way. I see um, unbelievable opportunity with you. I have this theory I really believe very true, by the way. You are always one decision away from totally changing your life. One relationship, one new thought, one, you know, one idea. I mean, you've proved that, that the decision in 2016 impacted you negatively, yeah. right? But that's one decision. You've made lots of other decisions, like the decision when your body's aching or you're sick to get up and go train anyway. Yeah. When other guys are like, I'll get to it tomorrow, right? That decision, that decision of like, I'm already winning. I can eat a whole pizza right now and no one's gonna care. To have the discipline in your nutrition. So you I, ju I just did that. I know you did. <laughs> but those, those disciplines in your life, right? So now the question becomes, I think you're one decision away right now from changing your life again. And this is a guy who's always been able to do this. So this is not a big reach for you. We're now one decision away again. And that decision is number one, do you want to change? I'm gonna ask you that up front. Do you want to change? Yes. Okay. One thousand percent. Okay. What do you think you want, though? Like ultimately, if I said, "Hey, it's it's now forty-seven-year-old Ryan Lochte, and now his kids are getting a little bit older. They really know who Dad is now, yeah. right? You can't, you know, being a being a kind dad and playing with your kids and all that. That's one level of being a great dad, being an involved dad. But I want to say something to you that I want you to never forget. There's lots of ways of neglecting our children, and one of the most insidious forms of child neglect is a father or a mother who is not pursuing their true potential anymore. And you install that in your children. And the good news is right now, if they started to read about their daddy, he's a world champion. He's a champion. But now they're gonna catch it watching you. 
So we have to get you chasing that new dream. We have to get you chasing it. We have to do that, not just for them, but for you. What would that look like for you at 47 years old? What would, the, what would it be? What would be like, wow, I did it again. I, I won the life gold medal. You know, honestly, well, probably a couple more kids. Okay, look at you. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, you know, living in our dream house and like my family being happy. Mm. Me making an impact, not on just their lives, on other people's lives, especially okay. kids. Okay. Um, I've always been that role model type. Yeah. And then 16, it kind of, I was getting messages like, oh, you're not a role model anymore mm -hmm. to me just mm -hmm. because of everything that happened. Mm -hmm. And I've, I'm changing that. Yeah, you are. I'm trying to make, be a better person mm -hmm. every day, um, which I have. Um, but like, I do want my kids to grow up in like 40, when I'm 47 being like, damn. Yeah, yeah. Like that's what I want. Okay. That's, what, that's what keeps me going. So we know you're passionate about kids. We know you're passionate about your own kids. Let me ask you a question. Let's talk. Would you like to know some of the things I think you should do to make this change? Yes, please. Okay. I think there's a world of opportunity for you, brother. Yeah. I absolutely believe that there can be millions of children's lives that you change. I think that I think you could change adults' lives by being so vulnerable. I want to acknowledge that. It's not normal for someone with your resume to be willing to come out here and say, hey, man, here's where I'm at in my life. You know, I think it takes tremendous courage. It makes me emotional now uh, to see a man of your stature have this type of courage to say, hey, listen, man, I want to do it again, but I need a little help. And I think one lesson for everybody is that there's never anything wrong with asking for help in life. It's one of the signs of strength to say, hey, can you help me? And I think most people would be amazed at how many people want to help if you would just ask them. If you just say, hey, can you help me? And I'm honored to be able to help you. So let's talk about this number one. What are you one of the best people in the world at? Uh, this thing called swimming, right? I happen to believe, I just looked it up because I knew we were gonna meet. There's somewhere around 10 million children in the United States at any given time that are involved in some sort of learning to swim or competitive swimming. Now they could go to some local guy or they could yeah. have the best guy in the world teach them how to swim. Have you thought about maybe having a swim school for kids? Um, not so much a swim school like a swim club. Yep. Um, I mean, that's what I would love to work towards. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm doing right now is setting up swim clinics. Yep. Teaching kids how to swim. Okay. Um, it's one of the most leading deaths in the world. Mm -hmm. I think it's the second most leading deaths in the world mm -hmm. is drowning. Mm -hmm. And I, I can prevent that. Like, we all can prevent that. Just yeah. taking time out and teaching a kid how to swim. Mm -hmm. So I want to do that, um, doing swim clinics all across the country and world. I love it. Yeah, because you're a worldwide figure. And not just teaching them how to swim, but teaching them things that, because it's not about me. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about the younger generation. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to help that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, and the best way I know how to do is through what I know, Yeah, swimming. Well, I, I think that's absolutely the path. So if we're going to go through some of the changes you need to make, number one is anytime I'm looking at making a change, I want to ask myself, what am I already good at? Mm -hmm. What comes easy to me? What is something, and it could be simple for, I'm a good reader, or I'm a good listener. I care about people, I'm a good writer, whatever it might be. In your case, you're a really good freaking swimmer, right? <laughs> That's the understatement of the century, right? So number one is that. So I know that f swimming is a physical thing, mm -hmm. and I know that, you know, obviously if the best thing is to be in a pool with somebody, to be able to correct them and adjust, I understand that. But every other sport, so I think there's a monster lane for you to swim in right now, no pun intended. Every other sport does online instruction, and they do it very lucratively. Mm -hmm. I think you can do that with swimming. I think that you can, I, I'm gonna tell you how I think you can do it. Were you interested in doing that, yes or no? Yes. You know what you need then? You need a pool for you to be in and a camera and someone to film it, okay? And there's these subscription sites where people will pay $8 a month, $10 a month to learn to swim, both competitively and for their safety. So that's number one. I think you should have the Ryan Lochte School of Swimming online. These are not expensive things to set up. They're very inexpensive to set up, and they'd be right down your alley. Is that something of interest to you? Oh, yeah. Okay, so I want to work on that when we're done. What you do, Ryan, is I want to talk to you about now social media, okay? YouTube is a great place to get free eyeballs on your content mm -hmm. for anybody. If you've got a book even you want to write or anything you want to do in your life, YouTube is free. Yeah. You can monetize the YouTube channel, but in your case, you can do what we call teaser videos. Do you know what a teaser video is? Yes and no. Okay, let's, let me just take you through it really quickly because these are solutions. Where you give them enough information that they want to watch your video on how to learn to correctly do something in swimming. 
you're better at that than I am, about foot placement or arm placement or breathing. And it's enough value that they go, I want to subscribe to the Ryan Lochte channel, but then there's an upgrade from there to go to your website to get into all of the detailed content. So you use YouTube as a lead generation for your online website. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Same thing, same camera guys, same video. It's the, it's the first version of the video, and mm -hmm. then the more detailed stuff is what somebody pays for. So you okay. give value, there's reciprocity that leads into the value that they would then get. Uh, by getting onto your website. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, I will connect you with the people who can do that website with you. You're gonna find the cameraman and we're gonna start to monetize that. You start doing the math. You get 10, 12, 15,000 people a month paying you $10 a month or $25 a month for a subscription. You have residual income coming in. Yeah. In addition to your in-person schools. Do you want another lane to swim in? Okay. Let's get into that more after the break. I just want you to think about this just for a minute. I gotta tell you that growing in population right now are guys my age who wanna swim. I wanna swim for two reasons if you're over 30 years old. It's low impact exercise, Yes. okay? No one's teaching anybody how to do it though. Mm -hmm. The other thing is all these Ironmans that keep growing, Yeah. you know the number one event that eliminates almost everybody in the Ironman that is swimming. an amateur? Swimming. I'm starting to get you nailed it. in CrossFit world yeah. and how these CrossFitters learn how to swim is on YouTube. You got it. And I can help them to better them because they say swimming is the hardest part of the, doing CrossFit. I was like, I don't know, lifting 500 pounds over my shoulder, that's pretty heavy too. I mean, and what's, what's great about that, that's for them because yeah. swimming comes easy to you. This yeah. is what entrepreneurs do. They solve people's problems with things they're already good at. And a lot of times we take it for granted. I'm already good at this, who needs it? You'd be surprised who needs what you have. Here's the other thing. I want to know the mindset of someone who's a champion. So that same sight, those same thoughts, do you know how valuable it is to get in that brain of yours and to know what you think about work? Let me tell you what you have that you could teach people. You have a different relationship with pain than the average person. Yeah. The reason most people fail in life is they avoid pain. They want to stay away from pain. It's our natural human tendency. It's what keeps us alive. It's how our yeah. brains are wired. What's really interesting about that is people that win in anything, they flip the script on that, don't they? And it's that mindset of a champion that's very different than the average person walking on the planet. You take for granted that you have it. But I think people want to know about that stuff, bro. And I think that could be part of what you're having people do as well. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, so that's a lot of lanes to swim in, so to speak, for you. When you were talking about the different lanes of me swimming into, I like started getting goosebumps inside because it's, I have that, that fire inside me now. Mm -hmm. I have that ignition. Um, and I'm ready to go. Good. I'm ready to get that gold medal in something else. Good, brother. I love it. We do that. That's so good. I love it. That's good. Last thing. How do we get people to find you? I think number one, people want to follow the best, so that's you. Yeah. But I think above swimming, there's a higher calling for you. This is just my intuition in meeting you. Okay. And I think people love a comeback story. And I think the world is full of bad news all the time, bro every day we can flip hundreds of channels can't we this is going wrong we should hate each other here's a bad thing here's someone who hurt another person this stuff's everywhere all the time right people love a comeback story i think you documenting on your social media that you're making a life comeback would get people rooting for you everyone's nodding bro here's how i'm making my comeback ryan lochte 12 time medalist i'm making a comeback guys I'm changing my life and I'm going to take you through the good days and the bad days, the ups and the downs, the dark days and the bright days, the days where I'm doubting myself, the days where I make mistakes. I'm going to document it. You can come on this journey with me and make this comeback with me. I think people will learn lessons, they'll be inspired, and they're going to follow you. Are you willing to do that? That will be very hard. Mm -hmm. I see my wife do it, which I don't know how. She's like mm -hmm. putting on makeup. I'm like, how can you just like mm -hmm. talk in front of the camera like mm -hmm. that? She's so she's so good at it, and like I've tried, and I just 
like words can't come out right. Like, really? It's... Does anybody think Ryan's done pretty well today? What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, listen, you have to accept something, man. You have to accept something. Not everything in your life is going to be swimming. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to be okay at certain things. In fact, you're going to suck at some things in the beginning. And then you're going to get pretty good at it. Then you're going to get really good. Then you're going to get great. And then you're going to be the best. And something tells me, if I went all the way back in your swimming career, you weren't the best the first freaking day you jumped in the pool. Oh, I was the worst. You were the worst. <laughs> that was the worst. Okay, so, so this is proof, bro. I think you have to be willing to start at something you're not great at and go, I may make this up. By the way, the cool thing about the internet, if it doesn't go really well, you put stop, delete, and you do it again. <laughs> until you do it again. <laughs> and you'll finally get it right. But I think that there's a calling beyond swimming for you, bro that I think people want to root for you. I think most human beings right now, after what we've been through in the world the last few years, want to make a personal comeback. And they don't really know how. And guess what they need? A coach, just like you did. And I think you could become the comeback coach. I think you could become the swimming coach, but I think you could become the comeback coach. I want you to do that. And I want you to do it for not just your family, but for the millions of people, bro. I don't care if only one person gets their life changed from you, brother. I think all this stuff you've been going through in your life is preparation for this moment. I really I like believe that. that about you. Is that a yes? That's a hell yes. All right, man. Okay, I love that. All right. All right. So, do I have your full commitment to make this change? Yes. Okay, you're on. And I want to thank you for being so vulnerable today, brother. I think you're one of the most remarkable athletes that I've met, not just because of your achievements, but because of your heart and how much you love your family. You're a good man. And I hope that today was a change for you. I hope it was yes. a change for everybody watching. And I just want to thank you for being here, brother. And we're no, going to make this happen. You. I can't wait to see your channel, your YouTube channel, your subscription site, and your social media showing us how you're making this comeback. So thank you. Hi, right, brother. Thanks, man. Thank you, hug. Oh, brother. Thanks, man. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always try to help the audience as well, and so we try to take questions from you. Here is a really good one. How do you make someone else like your spouse or partner see your vision and have them agree to it, whatever it takes to get there? Well, a couple things. Number one, do you really need that? Like, really? I hear this question often all the time. I can't do this because I don't have support of my spouse or my partner. Well, if that's going to eliminate you, you're going to get a whole lot more rejection and difficult things in your life outside of your house than you are inside of your house. So if that's going to take you out, you need to question your commitment level right off the top of how committed you truly are to whatever your vision and dream is. Having said that, I understand how great it would be to have them buy in. So here's the key. Seeing people see people. Meaning this, how about you listen to their vision first, their dreams, where they want to go in their life. Be present with them. Ask them the question, where do you want to go? What do you see? What makes you happy? What are your goals and dreams? And truly be authentic and be present with them. Once you've fully felt that answer for them, then you're open to share, this is my vision, this is my dream, and maybe you find a way for those two dreams to meet in the middle where there's at least a common overlap of part of your vision and dream with theirs. Seeing people see people. Make sure you see them first.